Welcome to Everything Life and Real Estate. Let's get started with our hosts, Linda McKissick and Dana Gentry. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Everything Life and Real Estate. I'm Linda McKissick. And I'm Dana Gentry. Hey, Dana. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. I have my uh, mug that says... <laughs> Coffee because adulting is hard just for you. <laughs> I was just talking to somebody over the weekend and telling them the, uh, the, the our quote, the moment when you uh, have something, a hard decision to make or you need advice and you need an adult, you're looking around and then you realize that you are an adult and then you're like, oh crap, I need an adult or adult. And they had never heard that and they were cracking up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, which by the way, there's a great book. I just started it. Have you read it yet? It's called uh, The hard, hard Thing About Hard Things. Yeah, I'm about three-fourths of the way done with it. I thought of you, at the minute, minute I started reading it, I started thinking of you yep. and I when our uh, yep. adult or adult moments. Yes, yep. It, 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 that's a great book, honestly, really great book. I'm working that into some of my industry update training this month and next month because it is just really good. That's awesome. That's awesome. So we just uh, decided we we're going to talk about shift uh, because we're feeling it and the agents are seeing it and all that stuff. So why don't you kick us off and let's, uh, yep. let's talk a little bit about the shifting market that we, we're feeling out there. Yeah, well, it's interesting because I'm in really kind of four different markets um, mm -hmm. with our market centers and then also living part of the time in Charleston, South Carolina. And it's interesting to see kind of how all different areas are shifting a little bit differently. Um, but some are feeling it more than others already. And I, I know like three months ago, get when we were in a mastermind with Gary and he said, we were, we are already in a shift mm -hmm. and everybody was kind of shocked by that. And it took me a minute, but after really doing further research and listening and digesting some of the things he said, I never really, I guess, technically knew that the, the world, the government, if you will, defines a recession as two quarters straight in a row of negative GDP. Mm -hmm. And so typically we feel it in real estate before the before our economy or the government actually says we're in a recession. We are already feeling it because people are, you know, it's it's not as many kind of what Denise just said, not as many multiple offers uh, by sellers can't make these crazy demands that they can make in a different market. Uh, not they're not buyers are not willing. There's finally a ceiling of where they're like, OK, that's crazy. Like I'm yeah. not. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Um, and even last night, Adam and I, we've been walking. I've been trying to walk every morning and every night on the countdown to the wedding. Um, but last night we were walking in this house that we love in our neighborhood. This man was out front and he'd had a for sale sign. And we noticed that, I mean, Steph sells like, you know, in a 20 minutes in our neighborhood. And Adam said, did you sell? And he said, yeah, we did. And he said, have you found anywhere else to go? And he said, no, we've been in this house for 57 years. Wow. And but the buyers, we told them the only way we would sell it is if they'd let us stay till the end of the year for free. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so they already bought the house, already closed on it, and they're just staying there until the end of the year. I mean, and, and I looked at Adam and I said, and that's the stuff that's going to stop first. Like people are going to be like, okay, no. like I'm not willing to do this anymore. This is nuts. Yeah, for sure. Well, and, I, and back to your point about that we feel it before the media and everything else. Uh, that becomes part of our issue as agents because yep. sellers are listening to the media, media and then you go yep. in on a listing appointment and they're wanting, I just heard of this story a couple weeks ago, they're wanting $100,000 more because they're remembering the frenzy that they read yep. about and they heard about. So you have a hard time educating them and getting them up to speed with what you're feeling and sensing already. So it yep. kind of becomes part of our dilemma as agents is to get that gap closed between what the world thinks is still happening and what really is on the ground happening. The it's ground so truth, the ground truth, if you will. We just talked about this in our, in our monthly office meeting mastermind in Columbus last week, actually. And we're going to, and Troy Marsh talked about it and he's going to come on and be one of our guests next. But one of the things that we really talked about was like, we have to, we have to be the lo local market expert because yeah. exactly what you just said, when the sellers are listening to the media mm -hmm. or they're watching what's happening on social media or even listening to their friend who may be sold even six months ago, it's totally different than what it is today. And we have to give them that data and arm them with that so that when we go into their house, we they realistically understand that they're probably not getting a hundred grand over in a year for free to stay in their house like they might have been this time last yeah. year. But I yeah. think it was I think it's interesting because, you know, I remember Gary saying 
um, what what will happen is one day, our, one day soon enough, because inflation is so high, that our buyers are going to look up and they're going to say, and even just us as people buying, like four dollars and nine cents for an organic red pepper. One, one organic red pepper yesterday at Whole Foods. I mean, I was like looking around me, like, is anybody else think that this? And finally, I asked the guy, I'm like, is this per pound or per pepper? He's like, no, it's per pepper. I'm like, and even I was like. This is crazy. I mean, it's nuts. But I remember Gary said, well, it's one, it'll hit and everybody will look up and say, like, th this is too much. Like, it's enough yeah. and then we'll stop our spending, you know, or whatever. Yeah. But until people stop spending, it's not going to happen. Yeah. You sound like my sister now. She does all my grocery shopping and I, I couldn't tell you the price of a lemon, a pepper or nothing, really, honestly. <laughs> but she will, I, like literally the other day I came, she, I, I, I sent her to the store for some stuff and she came home and I said, where are my little cuties? And she goes, I'm not paying that. I'm like, <laughs> I, I forgot what that astronomical number was that she refused to buy me little cuties with my own money. So finally, <laughs> a few days later, I'm like, okay, I, I give, please just go buy the cuties. I don't care how much they are. I want those little cuties, you know, the little oranges. <laughs> those cuties every day too. Those are like my favorite thing. They're probably like $18 a pack. <laughs> I know, but uh, yeah. That's yeah. hilarious. Well, I'm in well, California right now and I think the gas here is like six or $7 a gallon. I don't know. I told Jimmy, I said, let's just stay at the beach. <laughs> I mean, it, it is. It's crazy. I spent like over eight, which I did drive. I, I, I did like a tour last week and was in every state and every market center and everything. But I spent almost $1,000 on gas. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it really, I could drive a SUV, but still, and it has to have the expensive one, unfortunately. But still, you know, I'm like, it is, it really is crazy. But all these things, I think, are obviously signs of us entering into a shifting market. Yeah. And, um, and, and everybody does need to bring their shift book back out. I love hearing about people who are doing shift book clubs and rereading it and all yeah. those things because that's, it's important, you know, right yeah. now. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that um, I, I hear a lot is the talk about the interest rates going up. And, you know, here's the th beautiful thing about that. It's if there is a beautiful thing. I got in the real estate business when it was 18 percent interest. I yeah. knew I did not know any different. 18 was what they told me it was. Now, sellers would pay down points. Uh, but yeah. for agents who have been in and never seen these kind of interest rates, Five is still great. Six is still good. Seven is still good. Anything yep. below eight is fantastic, right? So I think the other thing that has to, because uh, the first tactic is get real and get right, is we yep. have to get real and get right in our own mind. We can't be the barrier that says these interest rates are too high. No one's going to buy, right? Yep. Because yep. if we don't believe it, no one's going to believe it. We have to be able to, number one, understand that We've been here before and it's been even higher. So while you're thinking this is too high, it could go higher. So you've got to learn to educate your people so that they make really good choices while the rates are still reasonable, even though they're not three and 4% that we got before. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I mean, I still think that they're saying that they will raise them three more times by the end of the year was last I heard last week. And last week, I think they were right at six and a quarter. Yeah. Um, as most people were quoting or saying somewhere right around there. So, I mean, I still, I still, if people, that's like the hot topic. What are rates going to go to? What are rates going to go to? I still feel that Gary could be right and several other people that I think we could see eight by the end of the year. Yeah. Um, so it, that, so that actually, uh, to me moves to like makes t tactic number nine stand out the most, which is creating urgency. Mm -hmm. uh, with your buyers, overcoming buyer reluctance. I think we have to get really, really good right now at creating urgency with our buyers. Yes, they're go yes, the they can still buy, and people are going to. And and this was just driving me nuts the other day because I was trying to remember the five D's or whatever. Do you remember? Yes. Oh, it's that death, divorce. The, uh, well, I know my D's from the hold book, but I heard what you heard. Someone added to some D's. Wasn't it yeah, what was that? Death, drugs, divorce, distress. I don't know. Um, oh, are, he, yeah, it was when we were talking to Bo. Yes. Uh, no, was uh, it Bo? I don't know, but it was like, I can't find it. I had my notes right here, and of course, now I can't find it. But, um, or no, wait, are they right here? That's going to drive me absolutely nuts. Uh, 
anyway, I'll look for it while we're on here. But um, it, it did make me just like it gave me just a refresher to, to remember like everybody's always going to buy and sell. But yeah. we do need to create urgency with them now because the main reason is, oh, diplomas, divorce, death, diapers. <laughs> oh, diapers. Yeah. And, and there was one more and he didn't say it and I could not remember it. And it drove me nuts. You know, when you're trying to find something in your house and you can't find it and it drives yeah. you nuts. That was me their whole rest of that day. I was like, what is that dang fifth D? Um, but the reason being is because it does make a difference for people. Not people that are paying cash, you know, who cares? But if people are tight on their ratios, the higher that the rates go, the less of the home that they can afford that they want. So that's the reason to me for them to be creating a lot of urgency. Yeah, for sure. And and the only, you know, the other thing we have to be realistic about is, you know, the market will shrink some. So you have to be more competitive. You have to be more aggressive, more hungry for the business than you've yep. had to be over the last few years. You know, when, when, when there's plenty of buyers out there, uh, you know, yep. you haven't really had to hustle. Now you'll begin to have to hustle for the motivated buyer. Yep. It, you know, that part shifts. And so the beautiful thing is business is still done. There's still a you know, big portion of business, more than you could ever have a goal for personally. Yeah, but you have to be more aggressive on go getting your what number you need to hit your goals and and for your business. Yeah, totally agree. Actually, I just thought of something too with number three tactic number three, which is do more with less, and that's all about you know well number two remargin your business and expense management leverage. And sometimes I get irritated, be, and I had a great reminder of this yesterday on a coaching call. But sometimes I get irritated when people are like, they want to cut everything. They start to cut their coaching. They start to cut their marketing. That's working. They start to cut their pop buys, you know, all those things. And yesterday I heard someone say what they need to do first is look at their personal budget. And yes. they see they should cut personally first that they don't have to have so that they can keep putting the money back into their business to continue to have things that they need to to grow their business through a shift instead of saying, well, I'm just going to cut all this for my business. And then they wonder why their business goes down in a shift instead of rises to take opportunity. And I thought, man, that's a really good idea because most agents don't think they don't want to go to their personal stuff first. I've been guilty of that, too. Um, but I think that we're going to need to invest our resources in, in during the shift, too, in different ways. Like I had somebody say, I think I'm going to cut out doing all of my videos. And I'm like, what? That's like your main source for your business right now. And they're like, well, I'm scared to spend the money during the shift. And I'm like, then you need to cut out eating out instead yeah. because that's the thing that's making your business, you know. Yeah, and if somebody needs an incentive to do that because, um, you know, we, we are always motivated more towards the positive, the positive and the reason you want to do that is in every shift, the market share that we gained, we never lost. You, yep. If you can gain market share in a shift, you will never lose that market share. So yep. you, have to, you have to look at this for where the opportunity is in this, not at where the fear or loss in this is. There's so much opportunity in a shift, but you have to start looking for those opportunities and you have to believe that those opportunities are there if you take yeah. advantage of it. Yeah, I love that. I keep going back to thinking too, and I've been doing some videos on this and some panels on it, but is I think some of our agents are going to have to understand the difference between how we've been in the speed-based market and now we're moving back into a skill-based market. Yeah. And, and I don't remember it. I think, Linda, it was like close to 70% of the agents today have never been through a shift before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was like, man, you know, that's, that's eye-opening just to begin with. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, you know, and the, the thing is, um, because they haven't been through the shift, they don't know that they got to now start pr working on the skill. Yep. And, yep. and you, and another opportunity there because, you know, number four, find the motivated, you could find the motivated agent who doesn't know what to do that could join your team. You could find the yep. motivated that's wants to get out because they don't know how to do it in a shift and you could buy their yep. book of business or, you yep. know, buy a referral only take over their business. So not only thinking about finding the motivated buyers and sellers, which is a must in a shift, you cannot work with all the people <clears throat> that are unmotivated. So all of a sudden having a great script that says on a scale of one to 10, 10, you need to sell the house yesterday. One, you don't care if it sells this year, how motivated yeah. are you, you know, or how motivated are you to buy? Same thing with buyers. Learning those scripts are important, but same thing with finding motivated agents yeah. who need someone who does have the skill or can teach them the skill or an office that can teach them the skill 
or that's willing to work on skill-based stuff, you know, there, that's an opportunity there also that you could you could buy people's business or fold their business into yours and things like that because they won't know. A lot of them don't know what to do in a shift and they don't have anybody helping them figure out what to do in a shift. Yep. I just did my fourth Zoom yesterday with two teams who are wanting to merge together to join forces together. And I feel like it's becoming more and more. And one of the reasons is they want to go and talk to agents who they've been in great relationship with who maybe are not wanting to go through another shift or yeah. they're looking to exit the business. And I thought, gosh, it's just so smart to be thinking like that. <laughs> um, and, you know, before I feel like people didn't think that that much. They thought when you pulled your last sign up out of the ground, you know, you were done. But what happened to that whole database that you've had for all those years? Yeah, I remember the market shift, the last market shift that we went through, people were already exhausted and kicked in the gut. A lot of them didn't have the energy to, to nope. do, do what needed to be done. So, again, there's there's opportunity there also. Um, and if you're not, you know, well, the one thing you will need in this shift is you will need other people to yep. either mastermind with or in your office to have training to do things that are going to keep you engaged and keep you working on the skills that you need to skill. You can't, it's really hard to go sh through a shift alone. Yeah, that's a really great point. Yep, totally, totally, totally. I do think one of the things too that we should mention um, that I think are going to be big, especially going into the shift, are these mofers that everybody keeps talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, offers for immediate response and we've touched on them before but it's interesting to me to see how many more people are are coming up with and generating mofers mm -hmm. for their business and i think going into a shifting market i always remember an agent in our market in uh, central kentucky deuce kirk and forever he was his brand was 99 days and during the last recession I mean, his license plate was 99 days, his car was wrapped. I mean, just everything, because he said, if I don't sell your house in 99 days, I'll buy it. And, mm -hmm. now, I, and now I'm looking back thinking, gosh, that was such a great mofer. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm in 07, 08, 09. And so I think challenging some of our listeners and agents out there to come up with, like, what are your mofers? What is a mofer that you have that you can, that you can start to really push out with that you can have people come to you you know it's kind of that whole marketing thing but we've heard gary talk about it numerous times too and i'm hoping to get continue to just get more ideas on those yeah for sure i remember the guaranteed sale always worked well in a shifting market yeah. um and you very seldom had to buy any you just had a guarantee that if you couldn't sell it in 90 days you would buy it those yeah. worked extremely well you could take those to home builders who had a whole slew of buyers that wanted to buy a house but couldn't get their house sold. And we may not yep. go to that extreme. None of us know. Here's the one thing you don't know about a shift. You don't know where the top is and you don't know where the bottom is. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? That yep. is the hardest part. But um, you will be able to feel, I think, by, based on what's going on, what a good mofer is. Because if people mm -hmm. can't sell their home, then a good mofer is you can get it sold or you'll buy it, right? Some kind of guarantee. Yep. Yeah, I think a lot of people right now are... Um, they don't have the uh, funds to be able to do the things that they need to do, um, up, upgrading and updating and all those things wise. So instead, some of these agents are saying, hey, I'll go ahead and stage your house or, you know, we'll do the remodels or whatever just to be able to get it sold for the price that it needs to be at, which also is another great mofer. Just coming up with all, you know, all sorts of different ones. I know we've mentioned some before and I don't have them in front of me right now, but that actually might be a good a good podcast to just get a list of mofers. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. We should do that. And the one I remember too in other shifts was to have things talking about list of foreclosures and distress sales and things like that. And what I remember most about making those offers is 99% of the people never bought a foreclosure house because they were the they were crap, right? And you had a lot of times back then you had to bid on them because they were through like VA or FHA and you had to make auction bids on them. But the reality was it was just a good mofer to get people in. And then that wasn't yep. the house they really wanted anyway. So mm -hmm. it was just a, it was a, it was what's was, you know, that's what people think, you know, the buyers begin to think, um, oh, I can steal a house, right? <laughs> you know, and, um, and so there's that gap between what the seller thinks and what the buyer thinks, but you can always, there's always great mofers if you just think about what are the people out there thinking is going on and yeah. then use that, that you make that offer to 
pull them in. And then, then you just go through the regular process you go through of finding which house is the best house for them. Yep, totally. I think the one thing our agents need to focus on right now is understanding the market. And then yeah. everything will fall into place. If people are still super busy selling, I think that's awesome. And I think you need to make sure that you don't have your head in the sand and that you aren't preparing for the market that's coming and you're just focusing on the one that you've been in. And I think for some agents, that's a hard like mindset shift to make, which is I'm assuming why Gary is so smart and said the first one is get real, get right. Yeah. <laughs> get your mindset in place and then start to take action because we tend to be so busy in the inspections and the appraisals and the closings and you know the, all the things that we don't even understand that we already are in a shift and I think that that's probably a lot of people's biggest mistake. Yeah so true and I think the other part that's hard that I remember being hard about most people is it's 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 actually the opposite you, you know of course listings are always important but in a market where they don't sell agents tend to back off and not yep. want them because they don't know how to talk to them on a regular basis they don't know how to get them price reductions i mean think about all the things that agents don't know how to do because they haven't had to do if they if 70 percent have been yep. in, in new in the market since the last shift right you've got to learn to practice script reductions you've got to learn to learn yep. objections over pricing when people still think we're in the other market you have to learn how what's my communication rhythm that I'm going to need to give to sellers to keep them long enough to get them sold if that if that time begins to extend. I mean, I don't expect it to get back to where it was, but it could go to three or four or five months of, yeah. of, of them on the market, maybe even six. And that's yep. still short compared to what we've seen in, in our lifetime. Yep. In our lifetime, we've seen a year you know, yeah. sitting on the market. I don't think we'll ever necessarily see that. But I do think we could get up to three, four, five, six months. What are you going to say to people over that three, four, five, six months to keep them happy? Because yeah. a lot of times the seller, the minute they don't get multiple offers, they think it's your fault. So how do you set them? How do you have a presentation in such a way that allows them to understand and put you and them on the same side against the market, not you on the side of the market where they're blaming you every time they don't get a showing or the showing comes and they don't like it or they don't yep. buy it all of those things those are things that that will be new to most people and those are yep. if i remember correctly the hardest part for most people yeah and i think a lot of that i totally agree i think a lot of that is setting that learning how to set the right expectations on the front end which kind of goes back to knowing the market i mean if you're not setting the right expectation with your sellers then they're just going to be you know upset <laughs> yeah. wondering why their house isn't selling but yeah, I, I remember li like list having homes and every week we had weekly updates to the sellers because they would wonder why their house hadn't sold, why their house hadn't, you know, and yeah. it's just a different, it's learning different tactics and skills and the things that you need to do to, to prepare for that market. This is giving me all sorts of ahas now that I just want to, I think we need to <laughs> help all of those agents that have never been through a shift before. Um, I am doing a panel in July and actually I was going to ask you to be on it, but of, of, uh, the, t of the top three or four people that I know who've been through a shift and giving advice because I just think if there, if we have that many realtors that have never been through a shift, mm -hmm. it worries me that if they don't really know what to do, you know, I think that they've, they've got to get back to sharpening their skull, saw as Gary would say. Yeah, absolutely. And I think learning a good, you know, before you, you didn't really even have to have a listing presentation, you know, nope. press hard fourth copy is yours, right? And, yeah. and I'll bring you an offer in about 30 minutes after I get this in the MLS or, or yep. sooner or sooner. But now you're going to have to learn a full listing presentation and you're going to have to do it in such a way that you prepare them. And the other thing, Dana, because we talked about this on the front end is I remember you could have two or three markets going on in one city. So you have yep. to you have to become the local economist and know that if still the first time home buyer house t still tends to move faster. Yeah. Okay. So that's a different market than your upper end. All of a sudden your million dollar homes, they just sit and sit and sit and sit, right? Yep. So you have to now understand you could have multiple markets going on in the same in your same city. So that's yep. another part of it. That's why I think one of the tactics is become you know, a local economist is because you yeah. have to know, you have to know better than anyone what's going on. So you have to pay attention. You have to pull those MLS data every week and be abreast in or have someone in your office. Usually there's always one person in your office that's ha happy to give an MLS update every yeah. week. And, and that, yeah. that helps because then you can take that information back out on your listing presentation 
yeah. uh, but you do have to you do have to learn a, a great listing presentation. You do have to learn what is your communication. You know, I always used to say under promise and over deliver. So I would yeah. tell people I'll, I'll we'll communicate back then. It was such a long period of time. We'd say 10 days. You might not be able to do that anymore. But if you said seven, then communicate in four. I mean, yeah. whatever you tell them, communicate yeah. quicker, because invariably the minute I didn't do that, I would be thinking of a person and the phone would ring and it'd be them. And it's never a good thing when you're on the defense of why their house isn't selling. You so always true. you always want to be on the offense of why their house, what's going on in the market yeah. and and, you know, what's the market saying to us? Do we need to make a reduction? I mean, this it gets real skill based real fast. Yeah, real quick. That's what I was just getting ready to say. Well, we'll have to do more on these to keep everybody. Uh, and if you're listening and you have questions about shift, please email us or reach out to us or message us on Instagram or Facebook or whatever's easiest for you so that we can work on getting some of these questions answered. Um, because I, I, I'll be interested to see where the GDP ends up at the end of this month for Q2 and if it is negative or if it's not. So if they'll actually say we're in a recession or if we won't. Um, I haven't looked the last... I know for Q1 was negative and May was, although did you see that May, more homes came on the market in May than any other month since April of 2019. Wow. So that's also an indicator. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's interesting. Well, and, and again, when you have more houses coming on than you have pending, that's a number you, you're paying attention to also. So yeah. Yeah, if you have a question, a comment, a thought, and you'd like to uh, have talk to us about shift or you've got ideas that can help people in the shift, be sure and reach out to us at info at everything life and real estate. And if you have not hit subscribe, please do. <clears throat> and remember, <clears throat> Dana's looking for 500 of those five star reviews. So if you haven't given us one yet, we would certainly appreciate it. That helps other people find this podcast also. So Dana, Go get ready for that beautiful wedding. I'm sure that's coming up. I'm sure you got a lot to do. Uh, and I'll talk to you next week. Sounds good. See you then. See you then. Bye-bye. Be sure to subscribe for more business strategies and tactics to inspire you to live an abundant real estate life. Don't forget to rate and review so we can bring you the best content. Find this and other valuable information at everythinglifeandrealestate.com.